Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be making a 3D printed fractal vise. Before we get started, we'll give you a little rundown about all the parts. Getting started with the materials, we picked two different colors of PETG, a silvery, glittery black, and a coppery, bronzy, bronzy type color. I picked those materials because I wanted something a little little different. It's just a little bit different than what I usually have. Something a little glitter. Uh, I definitely don't have any kind of a coppery bronze kind of stuff, so I wanted to try it out. So we'll see how it goes. Next, I need a whole bunch of screws. So these are all M3 varying lengths, uh, depending on what you're going to be needing them for. I have gone ahead and actually seated all of the nuts in the certain pieces here, except for a couple of random ones, because I kind of want to show you what I, what I see. So within all the components, a lot of them need screws, and all of them need nuts. I have not seated any of the screws apart from the teeth of the vise, but the nuts, I have seated most of them, uh, apart from a couple of the random pieces like this, which are ones that you will need to actually drill holes into. I've drilled holes in a few of them already, but I kind of wanted to show you what I'm seeing if you're going to go build this yourself, you kind of see what I'm seeing, kind of give you a little bit of a little bit of a heads up. So the reason I wanted to try printing this is because I saw a video with someone printing this, uh, who actually designed it, on a YouTube channel called Teaching Tech. I'll put a link in the comment section below to his channel and the video. He, I believe, made it from someone else's restoration video of an actual metal one. I will try to find that and put that in the description as well. Uh, it was just something different and intriguing to me, something better than printing little trinkets. Some, it's actually something that'll work and is functional, or at least I hope so. One thing I wanted to tell you before we get going too much further is all of the materials, all of the parts, all of the screws, the bearings, the everything are all in the description below for where I found them. Uh, just Amazon and the Prusa website, that's where I was able to do that. Uh, they're not affiliated links, so click away, buy them there, or not. You know, it's cool either way. The only thing I wasn't able to find with a decent time frame, or even locally, was the right kind of threaded uh, lead screw nut. The design wants it to have the T-shape. And the only ones I was able to find were the round ones. I called around a couple places in town, no one had anything. Uh, the stuff online didn't have any kind of quick shipping that I could find immediately. Nowadays, it might be a little different from when I looked, but feel free to check. But what I did was I just marked it with a Sharpie and took it to my grinder downstairs to make it flat on both ends. I've test fitted it. It seems like it'll fit just fine. So we'll go, for, we'll go with that. So to get started, I guess we'll do the base first. Or should we do the jaws first? No, you know what, let's do the, let's do the base first. Let's see here. Now I'm doing this for the first time uh, actually while I'm filming this, so I am kind of learning as I go kind of thing. Uh, I will I will let you know the little things I've picked up about it over the uh, course of doing it is the uh, the middle piece here that seats the the brass nut. There's a couple of little indentations within the uh, casing here. Uh, denoting orientation. One is more shallow, one is longer kind of thing. So that's the where the orientation will end up going. Two of these on each end. All right, so the base should look like that, as far as I know. I'm not doing this with any kind of instructions either. I just kind of figured I could figure it out. So I know these two pieces here are little stops that go on both ends to kind of stop the lead screw from floating around too much, so I will get those on in a little bit. Next are the bearings. I have already greased these. I have moved them around. They do feel good. Put them in like that. So that looks like the bottom all put in place. Got the two rods with the bearings. 
You got the central rod with the lead nut, or the little screw, sorry. Everything feels okay, but yeah, if you turn it, it does really float the thing around a lot. So yeah, I can see why you were needing these little end nut pieces. The one end piece on the one side goes like so. And then this last one, like so. Everything fits nice and snug. There's no kind of movement with it, but we do have to screw it all together. All right, so let's flip this over and see if that works. Surprisingly enough, yes. Now, I don't recall exactly which size screw this needs to be. If it's too long, it will kind of jab out the other side. So it is not the M3x25s. Those are too long. So the M3x20s should work just fine. I will say one thing I'm already finding with the depth of the screws. They just barely kind of make contact with the threads. They, it's almost like they're not quite long enough for kind of margin of error. Keep that in mind. Uh, you may have to gen like really push on it just to the, for the screws to catch because what I'm finding is naturally put in and run, they're not catching. All right, now I got the, uh, the central part all completed. Let's get the end pieces on. Which way is down? It feels a lot smoother just having everything locked in place. I need a little bit of this, little bit of this left in the tube still, so might as well do that. This is just a little bit of that uh, Prusa stuff that you get in the box kind of thing. I also use that stuff to grease up the, uh, the bearings as well. That feels smoother already. Yeah, having uh, little bearings and shafts, you know, they make a difference. I know these two pieces here are end pieces that kind of stop the, the thread screw from floating around. And then the handle is this two-piece design. I've already kind of popped in all the hardware, uh, a couple of screws, a couple of nuts, just so I can pop it together. So we will get the handle put together here. So for the handle here, I did kind of look it up. Um, the screw it wants me to use really pinches this down quite a bit to the point where it doesn't float like this. I've opted for a longer screw. It does have a little bit of a, a stick out there. I'm completely fine with it. It's not gonna be something that's in my way. That's something I'm okay with. Uh, if you want to not do this, by all means. Now this there looks like a, like quite the success. Little stop things are in there. This feels really smooth. I mean, that's that's just that's smoother than any vice I got downstairs. That's really nice. I'm quite happy with that that, that mechanism actually. Yeah, just it it's smooth. Nothing's binding. Nothing's grinding. Nothing feels like it's trying to pull itself out of itself. I'm really happy with that. So now I printed these feet here. I printed this on the bronze, bronzy, coppery PETG. I didn't have any TPE, TPU, kind of a rubbery, flexible material. It's just not something I have on hand. And I guess these notches are like this. The notches here are for where these little end caps are. So put it like so. Just checking to make sure they're not uh, 
interfering and they're not. That's good. So I believe all we got to do now is make the jaws. The mechanism works, but now we got to make the jaws. And I guess we also have to make, uh, mount on these little extender rail pieces, which mount on here kind of thing. And that's where the jaws mount onto. And that's kind of on, well, no, not over here, but here and here and here and here. Or is it here, 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 and here? We'll figure it out. So this here is the back piece, starting piece. And what you're supposed to do is kind of build it uh, biggest to smallest. Now I have test fit all this stuff. It does feel smooth and I don't feel, I don't feel any grinding or anything like that. I am going to grease these up as well. Just a little bit of a a little bit of a dab within the uh, the dovetail there. Little dab will do you. I really don't think you need too much, so I'm just going to put a little little dot on both sides of the dovetail. I'm like I said, I'm really not putting much in there. I don't think it really needs a lot. And then yeah, go a nice back and forth to spread it out there, and it and it feels smoother already. Like I'm looking at it and there really isn't that much grease on there, but it's it's enough to make it free floating. So yeah, don't uh, don't uh, don't overdo it if you don't need to. Next step is to get the secondary pieces mounted up. I'm gonna put a little bit more in the ends here, uh, grease, just to uh, just because I just did, this one part doesn't didn't get anything so. All right, so that piece is done. We'll get this one done. So now that we know our main jaws are good, it's time to build onto these. So what we'll do is uh, one at a time because they kind of start getting a little, little compounded at that point. And now these ones have little pieces of PLA as stabilizers slash guide rods, whatever, what have you. They are not very long at all. So yeah, what you want is these little guide rods in just to get some placement. Uh, and before I do that, I should grease that. Plop that on like so. And there you go. That's the one jaw there. So yeah, that's the secondary set of jaws done. A problem I'm coming into is the fact that some of the screws aren't able to catch on to the nuts. Uh, and some of the screws are a little too short. Um, I'm not saying the build of materials is wrong. I'm just saying the I'm saying maybe the model is built with such tight tolerance that there's no room. F there's no wiggle room. Next to build up on this side. And there we everything. Floats nice. Of course, there's a little bit of, you know, movement that uh, is a little stiff, but you know, that's going to work itself out. And once all the lubricant has a chance to work its way through. So now on this side, we'll put on the teeth. So the teeth come in two halves, which are effectively the same piece uh, that you have to drill a hole through. What I've done is already put the nut, already put the screw through, uh, just loosely put together. So all I have to do is kind of put it on, clamp it down, and it should be nice and secure. And that there is one side of the jaws done. And boy, are they floppy. If anything, I almost should have not greased it. it. It moves around a lot. Now, to do it again with the other side. And that there is the second one. Let's see how they handle a pair of pliers. Box, which, yeah, box, <laughs> rectangle. Huh, it's secured it way more than I thought it would. So yeah, we have our mechanism, we have our jaws, got our, mech our mounting rails here. 
So just gotta figure out how to mount it and that should be it. Well, it does have some sag to it, eh? Just kind of upright like that, it's got some sag to it. I will say this though, the teeth have gotten some got some slop to them. I'm not too sure if it'll be able to because I'm kind of holding it at the same time. Well, I'll be. Look at that. It's a little crude, but I I think it's it works remarkably well. Oh, one thing I just kind of remembered as this thing flopped off. Because I know these were supposed to be printed in TP or TPU, well effectively rubber, uh, I didn't know if these were going to have more of a form fitting fit to them, so I printed them at 101% and they're too big. So that's something I'll probably fix in the future, get a spool of uh, TPE, TPU, some black rubber or something like that, and then I'll do it as a straight size. Uh, yeah, just kind of aired on the side of caution, but yeah, they're, they're too big. For what I did, uh, the, the actual file should just be, should be just fine. Yeah, she's, she's not perfect, but, you know, it's a nice prop piece. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold a 2x4 with it and go to town on it, but, uh, as a, as a conversation piece, absolutely. And like so. That there is a 3D printed fractal vise. If you like what you see here, just uh, give this video a nice thumbs up, uh, like and subscribe, uh, and as always, have a good one.